Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. It's nice to see all of you uh, out here this morning. We're, we're getting a few more people coming this morning, and it's, it's nice to see that. The weather's warming up, so we don't have the sub-zero temperatures, and, and we've got uh, a little bit of snow melting away. And it was a little foggy this morning. I had, to, I had to run over to Edgewood this morning to fill in for Mike, who's in Phoenix. Uh, that's a real uh, joy for us today. Mike and Chris Jackson are in Phoenix right now visiting family. And uh, they got a chance to go to the Grand Canyon, and this is the trip they've been hoping to do for a long time. So it's a real blessing that they're able to do that. And uh, uh, But I, I guess I'm forced to report that Mike is golfing today. Oh. Don't shoot the messenger. Uh, I, I, I wish him all the best. Uh, actually, if I was in this situation, I would probably be golfing too. So, But... Uh, uh, real joy for them to be able to get out and do that. But uh, they were supposed to have somebody fill in for them. Uh, unfortunately, he came down with COVID at the beginning of the week. Uh, so they had to settle for the third string this morning. Uh, so uh, you're getting you're getting my best, but it's their third best. So that's kind of the way it goes sometimes. Um, we've uh, got uh, a couple of things going on. Uh, we've got UMW returning to meeting this week at 1.30 on Wednesday at the church. Then uh, on that evening, we will <clears throat> also have uh, our Zoom Bible study. For those of you who are in the Zoom, Zoom Bible study, that's a 7 o'clock Wednesday night, and uh, we'll be doing chapter 3. If you didn't get in on a book for that and you would like to be part of that, we, we still have a book or two left. We have one book left. We have one extra one left. So uh, uh, if you want, you can join us. Make sure I know. So I can make sure you get in on the Zoom invitation for the class, or for, the, for the study, but uh, that would be a, a good opportunity for us to get together on Wednesday night. Uh, Monday, March 22nd, we will be observing the World Day of Prayer at 1 o'clock in St. John's. And wearing a mask, social distancing, and hand sanitizer will be in place. Uh, birthday this week, Corey uh, Payne is, uh, has a birthday on March 6th this week. Uh, it's March tomorrow. Where did it all go? And uh, But we've got uh, wonderful weather in the forecast, so we're just praying and hoping that all works out and, and uh, things are starting to look up. Finally, I hope. Are there any other announcements, joys, concerns, things we'd like to share? Yes. About the World Day of Prayer, it usually is the third Friday. Mm -hmm. um, is it correct that it's going to be Monday the This is just the year. Why would we do anything the same as we've done it before and on the same time schedule we've done it before? So we've learned to be very flexible, and we're learning more and more how to be patient. I keep telling myself that. So thank you. Well, let's uh, start this morning then with a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for warmer temperatures, and we thank you for melting snow and ice that isn't quite as bad as it was. And the opportunity to be able to get around and, and uh, not have to wear quite so many coats and sweaters and everything. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in your place. Lord, we lift up those we know who are going through difficult times, the challenges that go along with winter, the challenges that go along with, with sickness and, and illness at any time of year, and, and then the challenges we deal with with, uh, with COVID and, and frustrations around trying to get vaccinated and the, all of the difficulties we see around us, Lord, we just lift them up and hand them to you and ask for your comfort and care. We ask for those who are, who are dealing with great difficulty that we might find some way to be some help to them. Lord, we ask your spirit to be strong within us so that we can feel your presence among us. And in that way, we, we are in right relationship to worship you this day. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us begin worship with music. We're going to do hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God. Thank you. 
be in the attitude of prayer as we <clears throat> have our prayer of invocation. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your glory is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast to the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue in an attitude of prayer as we prepare for the reading of the Holy Scripture. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that our scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed. We may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our Psalter reading this morning is Psalm 32. And it is a psalm of David. Happy are those whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up by, as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer a prayer to you at a time of distress. The rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. Please stand.
Charlotte Elliott. There's a really wonderful story about that hymn that I'll tell you someday. But today we're going to be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. That might be the shortest gospel reading you'll ever hear me read. <laughs> but it's... It's, a, it's something that we remember. It's short, it's easy to remember. You've probably heard the, Peter ask that question, how many times should I forgive someone from the church who sins against me? See, Jesus had just been talking to them, to his disciples, about sin, about the lost sheep, about the temptations to sin. He'd been talking about them when they were talking about who's the greatest. And he was thinking, you know, it's time these fellows need another lesson. And so he's, uh, he'd just been, been talking to them about how if there's a confrontation between you and another person in the church, how you're supposed to deal with that. You're supposed to settle things between you, not let it boil over, not let it get, you know, too big that you can't get through this problem. And if that doesn't work, why take, take them with you and have some other people help, you know, discuss it, you know, in the church. And, and by the time Jesus had finished, writing that part, it, it started to sound like there is some legal formula to be being able to help these things. And that's kind of the way those people were wired in those days. Or there's laws, there's ways to do this. You know, it's almost like there was a, that there was a cop at church that made sure everybody followed the rules. You didn't follow the rules all the time. You didn't follow the rules. Why, then you're in trouble and we had to deal with it according to the rules. And so Peter's asking this question, well, how many times should I forgive him? You know, if you go back to the rabbinic law, it says three times, you know, because they figured, you know, the first time, why, that's an accident. The second time they sin against you, why, well, that's going to be a bad habit. The third time, well, that's it. I'm forgiving you this last time, and if it happens again, no more. And Peter's saying, well, you know, three's good. Let's double it and add one more for good measure. How about seven? Because seven's a good number. We like the number seven. It's a complete number. That must be what Jesus is really looking for. Forgive them seven times. And Jesus says, no, I tell you 77 times. Or if you read another version, it's 70 times seven. That gets to be 490, if my math is working. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, you can get to number 453 and say, now hold on, you're getting close. You're almost done here. Jesus was answering the question not necessarily the way that Peter wanted to, the question answered. He was using a, a form of, uh, of persuasion called a hyperbole. This was something Jesus used quite a bit. It was a way for him to be able to say, now listen, you're missing the point. He goes on to tell a story next about uh, the parable of the unforgiving servant. And at the beginning of the parable, there's a servant who is, uh, he owes uh, 10,000, yeah, 10,000 talents to his Lord. Now, talent was a unit of measure. And we're assuming that was, that he's talking about gold, talents of gold. And if you do the math, uh, that is uh, somewhere in the neighborhood, uh, well, a, a talent of, uh, weighs 75 pounds. That's uh, uh, at the current price of gold, uh, $75 times a pound times 75 times, it's a like, it's like $26 million. It's like this incredible amount. It's more, more work. It would take him 300,000 years to work that off. So when Jesus said, well, he owed him 10,000 talents, everybody knew Jesus didn't mean 10,000 talents. He knew, they knew he meant a number of Bigger than anybody could possibly imagine. I mean, it's bigger than the gross domestic product of, of Rome, you know. It was the idea that this servant owed so much to his master, owed so much to his Lord, that he couldn't possibly repay it. And so Jesus is, is telling the story where the man begs for mercy and the Lord gives it. And the Lord says, I'm going to forgive this debt. And he lets the man go. Now, that's 
really a very forgiving Lord. Um, I told the group the other night at the Bible study, um, the closest thing I got to that was an accident I had uh, clear back in the 80s. We had a, we had a Buick Skyhawk station wagon that, um, you know, we thought the world of it, but we'd had it a number of years, and uh, it was paid off, and so, you know, how you're trying to save money, and so you, you drop the full coverage on the vehicle that you're not making payments on, and you only got liability, and uh, we'll get by with that. And anyway, it was before Christmas, and I had stopped downtown, you know, next to the Julian Bridge. There used to be a, a, a Christmas tree lot down there. And uh, I, I uh, had stopped and picked up the cheapest tree they had, and tied it to the top of the car, and was headed back, you know, to put it up for Christmas. And I'm on one of the downtown streets, and uh, I have to stop, you know, in the snow and the stuff, and all over the road, and you know how it's been. And there's a car in front of me that's waiting to make a turn. And, and while I'm sitting there, there's a car to my left coming out the side street that pulls out, and uh, and. She's, she's coming around the intersection and coming toward me, and I'm thinking, she's going to turn. She's going to turn. She's going to turn. She's going to turn. And pretty soon I hear grinding metal on the side of my car. My beautiful, valuable Buick station wagon has got this long gouge in the side of it. And, of course, she stops and gets out. And, oh, sorry, I, 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 have, I forgot my glasses, and I have problems with depth perception. And... Said, okay, we'll, well, we'll call the police. Said, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. I got too many strikes against me. If I get one more, why they'll take my license away, and then I can't go to work. And then, and I'm thinking, okay, how about I give you my information? You give me your information. I'll get an estimate. I'll send you the estimate. You pay me what you can every month to pay it off. Okay, okay. So I knew that, some of the estimate is $450, which in those days it was a lot of money. Not today, $450, you barely, you can barely get the fly specs cleaned off of your car for $450, but sent her the estimate and the first month came in January and I got a check for $50, took it to the bank, all right, nine more payments and we'll have this, we'll have the money to be able to take it in and get it fixed. Came a couple weeks into February and I got another check, take that one to the bank, doesn't clear. So, so what do I do now? The teller through the window says, wait, and bring it back next week. That didn't work either. March, there wasn't a check. So I went to my insurance agent and I said, what can we do? He says, well, you got one of two choices. You can take her to court. Chances are she hasn't got the money to pay you anyway. And all you're going to do is end up getting her that ticket and she'll lose her license and probably her job. Or you can forgive it. So, we forgot about it. Now, I'm not saying that's by the magnanimous warmth of my heart that I forgave this nice lady. Um, it was kind of a, well, this is better than the alternative. It's just to kind of get over it. I ended up selling the car a number of years later for not very much. Uh, but, but that's the way that goes, you know? So when the, this master gives up, forgives 10,000 talents, this is an incredible gesture of forgiveness. I mean, he's being really, really, really nice to this guy. But then the servant goes out and does something. He goes out and finds somebody that owes him 100 denarii. 100 denarii is not a small amount of money, but it's like one one millionth of 10,000 talents. It's a, it's a considerable amount. It would be a good part of a person's wages. But he takes the man by the throat and threatens to have him put in jail and all of his family if he doesn't pay him back. Well, the master hears about this man and what, how he has reacted after he was forgiven so much. And, uh, well, he, he settled the debt, let's just put it in another way. But the point of the story is forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, or as we usually say it, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it isn't just a story that Jesus is telling for the good of the story. 
Because in those days, people understood that their sins weren't necessarily directed toward God. You know, we think about a sin as being something, oh, we said a word we shouldn't have said. You know, I give up my best farmer or plumber, plumber language uh, about something, and Lord, I shouldn't have said that, I'm sorry. Or understanding, you know, something that we thought, something that we did, something that we shouldn't have done. It's not just between us and God. Because in those days, they considered the real sins were the sins you committed against another person. They was a sin against God, too, and you needed forgiveness from God. But the point Jesus was making, make sure you're square with the other person. And he wasn't talking about make sure they apologize. We want the apology first, usually, right? Jesus is saying apology isn't necessary. Sometimes the apology isn't, isn't going to come because they don't even know they did something against you. Or maybe they did, but that's just the way they are, and you're not going to change them. Maybe that's just the way they live their lives. Maybe it's something that, heaven forbid, it's a, it's just the way that they are that you're never going to be able to change in them. And Jesus isn't saying forgive and forget, because even if we could forget, the forgetting can put yourself into some difficult situations. If you're around someone who's harmful to you, if you're in a situation where where the person committing the sin against you is, is, well, it makes it dangerous. You need to really consider your situation too. But Jesus is saying the forgiveness that you gave to another person helped your whole community. Because in their understanding, you know, you were part of a larger group. So if you did something, if you were... If you did something that was terrible, why it not just reflected, didn't just reflect bad on you, it reflected on everybody who's around you. That's how some people got thrown out of communities, thrown out into the wilderness. And the wilderness were the people who couldn't be part of the community for one reason or another. And some of it was something that they had done. They were cast off and they were, they were viewed upon with a great deal of, uh, of concern, you know, that, that, that there's a the very suspicious character because they're not part of the group. They aren't living with their family. They aren't living in that. They aren't an honored and, and welcome part of that community for a reason. And this is what they did with sinners. And that's why it was important that a person would be forgiven because forgiveness allowed them to be welcomed back into the community. Outside the community, they had no security. But in the side of the community, they could be part of the whole. And Jesus is telling him, there's two good reasons for you to get forgive. Number one, it's good for your whole community because it settles the problems. It gets rid of those issues that are separating people and causing disruption and creating hatred and creating terrible things that people are saying or posting or, or whatever. But the other reason is that it's very self-serving. Because if you're able to forgive, if you're able to get through that, you've got to realize that the grudge that you're holding is painful to you. It's, it's causing you different types of anxiety. It's causing you stress. It's causing you this, this challenge in your life that you keep bringing up over and over and over. And if you let it fester, it can really harm you. But if you can learn to forgive it, if you can learn to give it up, if you can allow the love of your heart to be like Jesus, to be able to say, I'm going to be okay. I'll just get past this. I'm going to forgive them, even if it's hard, and even if I have to forgive them over and over to get to a point where I feel better, I'm going to be forgiving. It's hard. It's harder than a $450 tent. It's a real challenge to us when we carry something inside of us, a pain inside of us, that is causing us the harm because someone has done something that really hurts us. It is in giving them that forgiveness. Hopefully they know you've done it. Even if they don't know you've done it, you're doing a good thing for, for yourself. You're doing a good thing for the people around you. 
Jesus is saying, settle your problems. Be good with one another. Don't let all that stuff fester and, 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 and die, drive stakes into the heart of you and your church and your family and, and the people around you. <coughs> Forgiveness is uh, it's restoration. And it's through forgiveness that we finally deserve the forgiveness that we receive through Jesus on the cross. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the wonderful gift you've given us of the love that allows us to try to forgive, that allows us to be restored and to help restore community and family and friends and church. Lord, we ask for the strength. We ask for the ability to be able to do this great forgiving deed as hard as it can be, as difficult as we make it. Strengthen us so that we might be able to do that for you, for our community, and for all of our friends. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is number 348, Softly and Tenderly. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home. place to share the love of Christ and be a blessing to each other. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. I, his counsel, shine upon you. With the sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet